Well, here we go, folks. It is Friday, time for another illustration masterclass. Today we're going to be using Adobe Fresco, so I'm glad that you're all here for that. Um, and it's been a while since I've done anything in Fresco, so I hope that uh, those of you who have never used it before are going to give it a shot after watching the show today. Remember, please, this is a little point of confusion we have quite often, that uh, Adobe Fresco is a free app. When I say free, I mean free. It's not like a free trial. It's not a lesser than situation. It's a free app. Yes, there's a paid version of Fresco. So this is where the confusion comes in. With the paid version, what you get is additional cloud storage. You get additional fonts from the Adobe Font Library. So you get all the fonts. You also get all the brushes. That's over 1,900 brushes designed by your friend Kyle Webster. That's me. Um, but in the free version, you still get about 80 brushes. You get all of the features and all of the tools in Fresco. You get unlimited layers. You get enormous document sizes, 8,000 pixels square, and everything else. So the only thing you're missing is a few brushes. And like I mentioned up front, the extra storage, the fonts, etc. So please grab it, try it. We'd love to know what you think. Okay. Ooh, that's a long sales pitch and you'll have to excuse me, but it's part of my job. And I do really truly believe that this is a special app. Um, it's near and dear to my heart. And I've had a little uh, part to play in, um, in helping to build it as well. I, I, I built the brushes in Fresco that you're going to be enjoying when you use the app. And um, anyway, enough of that. It's time for us to talk about what we're doing today. And what is that? Well, today we are going to be drawing on a photograph. This is a really fun thing to do. It's also a great creative exercise. Um, having a photo as your starting point is beneficial in several ways. First of all, there's already an image that can start to spark ideas. You can respond to it. You're reacting to what you see there on the canvas, okay? So it's not like you're starting with that dreaded blank page that freaks everybody out, myself included. Um, the second thing too is you can really develop a narrative. You can say, what does this make me think about in terms of the, the, the uh, feeling of the photo? What's the atmosphere? What's the setting? Um, what could that lead to? Alrighty, so why don't I pop over here to uh, Fresco and you can all take a look at my screen and see what we're doing. Um, pardon me. There we go. You should be able to see that now. Uh, we were having some technical difficulties right up to the last minute when the show started, so I'm glad everything worked out, and I hope everything is working out for you there if you're watching on Behance. If you're watching on YouTube, remember that I am not reading the comments on YouTube. My apologies, but I can only read them in one place at the moment, and that is at Behance, or B-E dot net, as in to be or not to be, B, B-E dot net, slash Adobe live. Okay, I'm going to move this little microphone here so you all can hear me while I draw. Let's hide this for a moment and let's pull our photo back up to 100% opacity. You can, you can see what I'm starting with on my canvas here. I'll jump out to full screen mode. This is just a stock photo of a beautiful landscape here. You can see we're in the forest, we're in the woods. And uh, before the show started, I began a little sketch. I responded to what I was seeing here. Um, and that was important to me uh, because I did not want to waste all of your time by me having to do the whole sketch uh, during the time we have together, which is short. It's only about an hour. Instead, I wanted to have a little bit of a rough idea down so that I could start drawing something a little bit more finished for you all uh, to see. Okay, but here's the photo. And I looked at this and I thought, you know, there's something about this that makes me think of you know, knights in shining armor and uh, dragons and other sort of fantasy elements like that, like the old King Arthur stuff. I think it's because um, when I was a college student, I spent a year in France, in the northwest of France, in uh, Rennes, which is in Brittany, Bretagne. And uh, they have a lot of foresty environments like this, okay? And these, these forests did, in fact, inspire the tales of the knights of uh, King Arthur and all those kinds of things and Merlin and all that good stuff. Um, so that was in my mind when I saw this photograph. And what I've done here, just turn this back on, is I have gone ahead and created this little sketch on top of the photo. Now let me just reduce the opacity of the photo, okay? There we go. So what I have is this dragon hanging out in the top left corner. And then I have this uh, knight who's looking the wrong way, kind of walking cautiously through uh, this forest path, okay? 
Um, and I'm going to also turn on the touches here for a moment, but I'm going to turn them off again when I start drawing and try my best to describe what I'm doing. The reason being that when the touches are turned on and you can see where I am on the screen, I can't see what I'm drawing because there's a big blue circle, which makes it hard for me to see what I'm doing. Uh, but just for the moment here, I'll go ahead and I'll turn those on, show touches. So now you can see where my cursor is, okay? All right, let's say hi to some folks who are joining us here. Hey, what's up, Anika? Nice to see you. Looks good, thank you. I appreciate that comment. Um, and I see uh, Darrell is here, and uh, or maybe is it Daryl? You know, it could be Daryl, like that cool 80s movie. And I see Anne and Fabio and Kevin. What's up, everybody? Creo's here from Ireland. Cool. Steve is here. Elizabeth, hello, hello. Thanks for the kind words, Elizabeth. And Gareth and Paul and uh, Lizette and all these nice folks. Ruth, how you doing? Uma Korn and Marcy. Um, if I missed anybody, I apologize. Uh, thanks for the shout out about the brushes. That's right, Elizabeth, you can grab the brushes. By the way, if you're in Fresco, a lot of people don't know this. Um, you tap on your brushes right here at the bottom. See that little plus sign? Just tap on that and you have this option to discover new brushes. And when I tap on discover new brushes, look at all this goodness. You have all the Adobe brushes to choose from. This is the Adobe Brush Library. Now, to use all these, it is true that you do have to be a paying, a subscribing member of some kind, okay, to some kind of Creative Cloud pr uh, plan. Um, but uh, no worries, the brushes that are already in Fresco, there are many of them and there are lots of options to choose from, okay? But I wanted to point this out. So those of you who are got a little CC action going on in your lives, go ahead. And the way this works is you just hit follow for any one of these brush sets you want, and it'll show up right here underneath our general categories here. We have library brushes, and there you'll see, look how many libraries I have. Too many, too many. But uh, that's where those extra brushes will show up, and they are great. All righty. Um, let's see. Any questions? Paul says, I draw using a photo as my start. I don't feel so guilty of doing this now that you see that Kyle is doing it. Well, listen, Paul, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a great way to start, I think. Um, Daryl, glad I got it right the second time. <laughs> um, yes, Lizette, that's why my French is passable. Thank you. Uh, but it's been 20 years or, well, gosh, I want to say how long that was ago. Longer than 20 years ago when I lived there. And I can't find any friends to speak French with here in Winston-Salem where I live, oh. Dommage, okay. Now, let us carry on with this drawing, okay? Enough fooling around, gang. So we have our dragon up here. And I, now here's the, here's the key to making this work, and here's what I wanted to demonstrate uh, for this particular exercise. An element like this tree, okay, gives me the opportunity to have something like this dragon um, move in and around and in front of and behind that element, okay? And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to block out a shape behind the dragon just in white, and then I'm gonna increase the opacity again of my um, photograph and see how that looks and, and see if it feels like it's part of the environment, you see? Um, and then it, it's cool to, to already have something that is in perspective. So this photo, of course, is gonna give me a, a perspective to work with, and I try and fit things inside of that, um, environment to make them look as if they really are there. Now, it doesn't mean I have to use a, a realistic rendering style or anything like that. In fact, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna do some line art with color here, inking and flat color. But it's about the perspective being right and the interaction between what you draw and what's already in the photo, having some degree of believability, okay? That logic goes a long way in selling what it is that you're doing. Hope that makes sense. Uh, all right, now with that said, it is time for me to go ahead and make a selection. So I'm going to use the selection tool here in Fresco. Now for the selection, I'll go ahead and leave the touches on. I should be able to navigate and see what I'm doing. Actually, I, I take that back. <laughs> I'm going to turn them off. I want to be really precise with this. I don't want to mess around, okay? So let's turn the touches off for the moment, and I will now continue my selection here. And this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because I will come back and make some adjustments, you know, when they refine the drawing. 
But this is a good first step for me to get to where um, I know that my idea is working, okay, in this environment here. So we're gonna have some claws here. I'm gonna have to refine those a little bit in a minute. But not right now. First, I'm just gonna get the overall silhouette of my dragon in place. All right, so here I can just cut this off and I'll go ahead and, and change where that cutoff is later. But just to get things started, I wanna do this. I'm gonna have one shape there, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and fill that with white. So I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool and select white, okay? And then I'm just going to tap right here and it asks me if I wanna use a vector layer or a pixel layer. I'm going to use pixels. There we go. And I deselect. And here what I can do is I can increase the opacity here of my photo and now see how that feels, okay? So the only thing I have is this branch that's interrupting the back half of the neck and then the arm, which I can erase away or I can later use some masking. So I haven't decided yet what I'll do. For now, I'll continue to just make my selections. Um, I can leave the opacity up pretty high right now because I can see what I'm doing fairly well with this line art because there's not a lot of dark color behind most of the lines um, in this situation. So back to that layer, go back to my lasso tool and then we'll come here and we'll continue to make our selection. Alrighty. And again, you can see that I'm overlapping the tree where later I will claw there that wasn't in my sketch just because I know I'm going to want that. And here's that foot, but I want to get it in place now, at least a rough version of it. Okay. Right. There we go. Got this arm poking out back here. Behind. I might want to do a better job of wrapping the fingers around that trunk at some point, okay? But for now, this will be good enough just to get something in there. And then we have this last little bit here with the tail, okay? So let's get that in place. It. Okay, and let's fill that. All right. So right off the bat, I can look at this and say, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling the way that bumps out there. So I'm going to change that. There we go. Erase that. Okay, that looks a little better. Um, and I can make some other changes in a minute. Let's bump this back up to 100. And there you have one element, okay, which is our dragon, sort of um, not really masked out, but just, just silhouetted, if you like, okay? That's what I would say about that. And here I can start to do things like I say, okay, you know, that, that needs to be clarified and I'll mess with that in a little bit. Um, same here. I'm not sure how, like how thick do I want that leg to be? It feels pretty good. It's probably going to be a little thinner, but that can be revised later. Um, you know, some of this stuff, I don't want to get too crazy with the wrinkles and whatnot in the neck. So I'm just sort of cleaning the sketch a little bit because what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce its opacity because it's sitting up on top of this uh, white area that I've just knocked out, right? And because I have it sitting up on top of there, if I reduce the opacity, I should still be able to read it 
pretty clearly. We should still be able to see it pretty clearly. Whoops. There we go. Make sure I work on the right layers. Just adding a little bit of white there for that other finger, whatever you want to call it. Now the next thing is on a separate layer, I'm going to go ahead and knock out silhouette for this knight. Now pause for a second, see if you have any questions. Like the dragon? Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. The default pencil is great in fresco. Oh, I totally agree, Cody. I really like it. I really like it um, very much. Um, I have to feed the hamsters in the modem. I'm not sure what that means. Am I having some problems with connectivity? Hopefully you all can see it. It looks fine on my end. I'm seeing it on Behance. No issues at the moment. Um, maybe it's his pet. <laughs> They're playing hide and seek, says Steve. Well, that's a nice idea. You know, I haven't I haven't indicated whether or not the dragon is a threat. We don't know. That can be up to the imagination of the viewer. They can make that determination for themselves. All right, let's knock back the opacity so I can very clearly see my sketch. And we'll use this layer here. Okay. All right, and we'll come down. Remember in Fresco, you can tap with the selection tool, the lasso, I mean, and uh, tapping is going to give you a straight line. Okay. So if you need to make a straight area in the selection, you can do so. And these shapes I'm drawing now, of course, again, these might get changed a little later down the road. Don't know yet. By the way, um, we have built-in smoothing with the selections that you make with the lasso tool. I don't think everybody knows that, so I wanted to mention that. It's subtle, but it's there. Fill it with white, and here we have our, our two characters, okay? Um, let's hide the sketch for a moment and just look at what we have with those shapes. And they look good, so it looks like, you know, and this is where I could refine that, that uh, mask for the dragon there. I would, um, what I would do is I would reduce the opacity of that layer so I could see the tree clearly through it, right? And then I would, you know, I could do some masking. Um, and maybe I will, I think I might, maybe I'll do this is a good opportunity to use a mask, I guess. Um, or I could just erase away what I don't need and layer, I'll, I'll lock the layer transparency. Um, I tell you what, I'll, first I'll demonstrate how you would do the mask in case anybody's curious how that works. And then I'll, um, I'll do the, uh, I'll just go ahead and erase it. Okay. So you tap on the layer, you say create empty mask thing like so. And if I just come to this layer and I slide back like this, I can see my art. But if here, the white area is showing me that everything is currently visible. And down here I have options to reveal or to hide. Okay, what I'm gonna use with math. I'm gonna be hiding some stuff. So I'm just gonna use uh, something simple like the Belgian Comics Inker. Come up here and I just start to paint where that uh, tree is, okay? And when I go back now to my art, you'll see, oh, it's gone. All right, I'll increase the opacity so you can see that clearly. See, now I've got that section of the tree masking off, okay, where I painted the, um, with the brush just now. Okay, let's go back to our mask. And we're gonna reduce this, uh, this layer here again, opacity, so I can clearly see that tree. So I wanna make sure I get that shape painted in there, right? I'll go ahead and increase the opacity of that layer a bit more, so I just really don't have any questions about what it is I'm dealing with. 
All right, back to the masking. And here you see, I can just follow along. Da, 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 I'm not gonna be extra perfectly precise here because again, we have a limited amount of time together. But accurate enough so it doesn't look horrible. Put it that way. See that? Simple, easy, easy, easy. Make my brush a little smaller. That means I can get a little bit more precise. Mask that away. And that should cover us for the most part. Here's a little spot right here I don't want. There we go. And here. There you go. And now what I do is I just go back to my layer like this, and I can turn that opacity all the way back up again. And uh, there shouldn't be any issues now with things, you know, not being where they should be. Got that branch um, in the top of the, the skinny branch up by his arm is now overlapping the arm. That's in the right spot. So we're in good shape. All right, let's turn our sketch back on and lower its opacity. Down we go. Okay, so I'm going to lower it. That's about 25%. And here I'm going to start doing some inking. Let's use black. We'll do like a comic book kind of thing here. This is going to be really clean inking. Um, I could use this Belgian comics brush actually. That might be a good choice. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I don't know why the uh, MacBook always goes to sleep. You would think that if QuickTime's actively recording something, it wouldn't do that. But it does. So, apologies, guys. All right, let's start the inking. Keeping in mind that these lines that I'm drawing, I'm going to go back into the white layer behind here and make whatever changes I need to make based on the decisions I make with the inking. So um, some, of, some of these shapes might change a little bit, right? But for the most part, they'll probably stay pretty similar to what I've already got on here. I don't, I don't see them changing that much because I've already pretty well established what shapes I want for the silhouette. But there might be like a couple pixels here or there where things just aren't that good. All right, let's make these slightly larger as we move up the body. Keeping in mind that this scale is disappearing behind the tree there, okay? this foot, hand, whatever we're going to call it. 
sort of wrapping around the tree here and I'll, I'll that's a shape I'll need to refine later with the um, that white shape back there Just because he's got this sort of severe expression on his face doesn't mean he's angry or bad. He can't help it. It's just the, the face he was given as a dragon, okay? So let's not assume right off the bat that he's angry about something or, or he's bad or whatever. I like that the way I had it like this. I think that's a better shape there. Okay, so you can see how that's shaping up right there. Sorry, no pun intended. Don't want that line art to be too heavy there. A little lighter. I actually set the pressure curves differently than normal. There we go. That feels better. For a demo I was doing yesterday. Anybody who has a um, IAMAG account, I did a two hour fresco demo yesterday you can watch, but if you don't have an account, they're gonna post it on their YouTube um, in a week. So you can look for that IAMAG. Uh, you can find tons and tons of great tutorials on there from digital artists who do painting demos, but also who explain their, their workflows, things like video games and concept art and just all kinds of neat stuff, all kinds of neat stuff. Check it out. Gotta thank um, Franck at Adobe Live France for introducing me to Patrice, who runs the IAMAG um, stuff. Thank you, Franck. All right. So far, so good. Now, you know, normally I would probably be a bit more careful with the shapes I'm drawing here, right? I would really try and get these all just right. But we are in a bit of a time crunch after all. That's part of the deal with Adobe Live is you know that it's gonna be a race to get something done sometimes, right? Unless we do a multi-parter, but uh, for this masterclass, uh, there's no reason to do that. I've done a few multi-part things, but for this one, I think you get the general idea. And this should hopefully inspire you to try this on your own with some photographs. It's really fun to do this with your own photographs, I have to say. That's a pretty cool thing to do. So we want that foot to really feel like it's wrapping around that tree, you know? Here's an area where I'm gonna change the shape, make it different from what I did in the, in the silhouette, okay? And I can easily just go into that white 
Uh, area behind the line art and make those changes after I'm done with my inking. So here what we're trying to do is have these scales turn and change direction as we head to the other, so that the tail is twisting as it goes around, right? That's what we want to communicate there. Hopefully that works. And like in that, in that area too, I'll go ahead and, and make some adjustments to the silhouette. I'm trying to get through this inking part quickly so we can move on to the night and also um, get to some color in this piece. Okay, so we've got about 20 more minutes together. It should be enough time for us to do all that. Like everybody else, I need to warm up, you know, that's why it's a good thing for me too to do this sketch before hanging out with all you guys because it gave me a chance to draw and I hadn't done too much drawing today, taking care of other stuff, you know, busy work, emails, slack and all that kind of thing. I can't just jump into drawing, um, you know, maybe some people can, but most people I know they're not like that. They need to... They need a, um, a proper warm up, you know? Just the way it is. So I'm the same way. I need that, I need that just as much as anybody else. All right, let's jump into that white underneath and just erase the bits we don't need. Okay, make sure that we're not going outside the lines too much there. Easy peasy cleanup right here. I missed a little section with the inking there. I'll take care of that in a second. It's easy to see what you're doing, what you miss. If you keep the layer opacity where it needs to be. Oh, jump back, jump back. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. And let's go ahead and just paint in the white areas where they need to be and erase them where they don't need to be. There we go. Okay, there you go. Back to black. And let's just, uh, whoops. Go ahead and add that nice bit there. Here and there, if you want to throw some texture in like I did in this section up here in the body, it's a good thing to do. Don't have a lot of time to do that everywhere, but you can just suggest it here and there. Okay? So let's take our tree and let's now increase the opacity back up to 100 and see how things look. And we'll turn off our sketch. Okay, now that's nice and clean. And you can just see how everything feels. Does it feel like it's part of the environment? Great, okay, good. Move on to our friend here this night. Pause for some questions, see if anybody has any questions. Um, let's see. Wow, Steve, that can't be true. If you go into terminal and type caffeinate, it will never go to sleep. Is that true? No way. Uh, holy cow. I can't believe it. 
Um, speaking of Max, I see Steve commenting on Max. My my one hour um, Max lab on uh, perspective and animation in Fresco. These are our newest features. Um, that lab is free and available on the Adobe Max website. So check that out, okay? Um, all right, any other questions? All right, nope, good. Then let us carry on with the illustration. Here is our friend, this knight. We're gonna draw him. I'll do a separate layer for his line art. Not that I have to, but you know, Why not, right? My hand is shaky today. I'm going to increase the smoothing. I'm just still not totally warmed up. I wanted to keep this guy simple to draw, you know, that's why I thought this this nice big cloak, cape, whatever you want to call it, behind him would, would help me with that. I didn't want to have to go to the trouble of um, drawing a bunch of armor and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't think it matters. I think for, for an illustration like this, like, you've got enough information, you know what he is, you know what he's up to. So you can give yourself a break. Sometimes you need that when you're drawing, like, some areas are going to be detailed and require a lot of attention and all that, and others, just give yourself a break. Okay? And that's just what I did here. Just give me a nice little break. That does not look like a hood. Come on, Kyle. That's better. I'll go ahead and clean up some of that other stuff in a minute. What we need to do here is create some roundness. So I'm gonna, I'll fix this silhouette in a minute, but what we wanna do is have this wrap more like that so that it moves in a, in a direction that is um, showing me that there's there's roundness there, okay? Make sure everything lines up. Just kind of cleaning up as I go and then carrying on with the drawing. Okay, and there's our fancy knight sword. Oh, you know, for this I could just draw a straight line, so I'll just do this. Draw it, wait for a moment, bam, snap. I love that snap line feature. Convenience. And onto the arm that is holding the shield.
Okay, here are our two players in the picture. So we'll hide the sketch. And um, now I can make decisions like, okay, do I wanna go darker with my, or more bold with my outline in some spots, you know, where it gets a little weaker here. Do I wanna just kind of punch that up? Yeah, that might be a good thing to do here and there. Here's a little tangent right here. Don't like that. No tangents. They're not my friends. So I will have the cloak, hood, whatever, just go out a little further like that, okay? Oops. And I can hold down my touch modifier and use the brush as an eraser in some spots where I feel like it's just a little too I don't like or need that line. That doesn't add anything to the picture for me. Um, there's another little tangent right here. So I can just make that a better transition like that. What are tangents? Anybody knows what a tangent is? Answer in the chat. And if not, I will I will assist you and I will answer. But I wanna know if people are have been watching my other streams where I talk about tangents a lot. In the composition series of master classes, I actually probably talked about it quite a bit. And if I didn't, shame on me. I would hope I did. All right, let's add some color to this. We got time, let's do it. Um, okay, no answers. No answers. Oh dear. Tangents. So you don't want to have lines or edges that bump up against each other, especially like uh, if they are supposed to be overlapping one another. If one thing is supposed to be in front of another, you want to make that clear with a very distinct and clear overlap. Um, you would not want to, for example, have this dragon's arm go like this and then out this way and have it bump up against the tree right there because then I can't tell what's in front of what, right? It looks like they're on the same plane because of that tangent right there. That's a great example of that. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. This will help with the visual clarity, help with the read, okay? It makes things read more clearly in your image. That is importante. All right, color time. So what I'm gonna do is, um, Mask layer contents, ta-da! And I'm going to copy that mask. And then I'm going to make another layer and paste that mask. So what that does is it makes it so that now when I color in this layer, everything I do is gonna be inside that mask, right? So if I draw a line See, I'm drawing across, but nothing's happening except what's inside of there. That makes it easy for me to color in there. I could also lock the layer transparency, but I just like to leave a separate layer with the white. Um, I do have to repair that mask slightly. I have to come in here and just show that little bit right there. There we go. Oops. Okay. 
And let's go ahead and sample color from our actual image like that. I'll grab that gray and I'll saturate it a bit more and then just grab a big brush and do that. That'll be my starting point. And I'm gonna make this super cartoony, so I'm gonna give this guy bright pink skin. and then move to a cooler color here. Because I'm using a mask, I can do this. I can, I can select outside of the lines, right? Like this, it makes it a lot faster for me to, to color. Like so. And I'm going to use that grass color as a starting point for drawing the shield color. Oops, hang on a second. I started my lasso in the wrong spot. And let's do that sword. Oops. Grab that color, go a little cooler, go a little lighter. Make sure it reads against the background and there you go. So it's kind of like you're doing like this sort of cell animation style, um, you know, line with flat color on top of a photo. And this is a fun way to work. There's all kinds of stuff you could do with atmosphere and actually start to make it, you know, use shading and lighting to make it feel even more like it's in that environment and still have it be cartoony. Um, and that's definitely something that I would probably play with and have fun with. Um, I'm going to make a new group. Watch this. Here we go. Doop. Da, 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 da. Whoops. I'm gonna make a group. And inside this group, um, I'm gonna make a clipping mask. And this will do the same thing as the mask before. So if I come in here and paint on the dragon, see what happens? Ta -da. Same deal. Missed a couple spots, but I'll take care of those later. All right, so what color do we want him to be? I like some of these reds and stuff I see in the leaves. They're kind of cool. And I like what they're doing, so that'd be a good starting point for me. Just want to desaturate that a little and brighten it up a little bit, so, you know. Something like that. Or because maybe he's camouflaged. That's even another idea. You know, could have him be camouflaged, and maybe that's why it's hard for the knight to see him. So I, I pulled some color there from the tree, right? Go a little lighter. And, um, you know, I could borrow that yellow from the shield and make that the... Uh, the eye color, you know, something like that.
Okay. So that might be a good way to do it. Just cleaning up these spots. Clipping masks, regular masks. The thing about masks that's good is what? They are non-destructive. That is why we love masks. You're not really getting rid of any information, are you? You're being safe about it by keeping your, um, your layers intact. You're just choosing to hide or show different parts of them. And I think that that's really cool. All right, well, you can see how this would work and what I would continue to do to play around and um, make it a success. Try this out, try your, try your own photos, get a stock photograph and, um, and try this. It's a great creative exercise. This will really stretch those imaginations of yours. And I think you'll find uh, that you enjoy this. And you could even make a whole thing out of it. This could be like a style that you employ for money, right? Could be a whole editorial style or advertising style where people get to know you as the person who draws on the um, photographs, you know? Who knows? All right. Well... Let's see, any final questions? Tracy, you're so kind. Thank you. Um, would it be easy to make a pattern in fresco, a, pl a pattern of the moss on the tree to color the dragon with? Yeah, totally. Just go like this. Option, well, I say option, I'm not working in Photoshop. I would hold down my touch modifier and make a multicolor swatch. Okay, so here, let's go back. Oh, I I'll go back in this group. So like this, if I just grab this area, okay, now my brush has that those multiple colors on it. And I can increase my spacing, okay. And we'll get rid of all this scattering and all that nonsense. Let's just reset this brush, there we go. See what I mean? And we'll increase the angle jitter so it's all crazy. Use some pen pressure. Test out our brush there. And then you could do, yeah, crazy stuff like this. See? Multicolor swatch, multicolor eyedropper is a superpower in fresco. So you must try it. I insist. Multicolor eyedropper. Hold down the touch modifier to do it, or just come over here to the old eyedropper and select this guy. You can select anything in your image and you can make it into a brush. It's as powerful as that, folks. Insane. So if you learn nothing else today, I hope you learned about the multicolor eyedropper. Alrighty, well, thanks for joining me for the masterclass and um, everybody have a great weekend. And there are no streams next week, but there will be the following week. So join us then. And until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Remember to be kind. I'll say ciao for now.